Good morning. I am here today with Dr. Christopher Perrin. He is the CEO of Classical Academic Press, and he is also the director of the Alcuin Fellowship, which is for classical educators. Today we're going to have a short conversation about his experience as a language learner and the way that he feels language learning fits into the classical model. So um, enjoy our conversation. I hope you find it edifying and encouraging. And uh, with that, I will ask my first question, Dr. Perrin. So, Dr. Perrin, I know that you have written curricula in Greek and Latin. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit, how did you come to learn those languages? Where did your interest uh, from those come from? Um, I was a freshman at the University of South Carolina, and uh, I was taking an ancient history class. Uh, my dad thought I might want to be a lawyer, and so he said, why don't you be a criminal justice major? And so, I'm like, that sounds good. So I, I declared a criminal justice. But I was taking uh, History 101, and Dr. Dolan, who was at the time, he must have been about 70, six foot four, Irish-American, big white hair down to his uh, shoulders and big red cheeks and a red nose, uh, probably weighed about 260 pounds. He would come into class and almost kind of bark at us a bit and just start telling us about the polis and the history of Greece and Rome. And, um, and he would kind of, uh, he was very entertaining. In fact, I really loved the class, and he would, he would bait us a bit. He would um, kind of play with our ignorance, and he would say things like, uh, have you ever heard of the polis? I don't think you've heard of the polis, have you? Well, it was one of the most important institutions in history, and you know nothing about it. So let's begin. <laughs> and then at one point, I think he put uh, the Greek word polis, or another word, on the board, and he spelled it in Greek. He said, this is, this is a Greek word. Anybody here know Greek? No, you don't know Greek. You don't know any Greek. And, and as he said that, he would throw chalk and things. But as he said that, um, I just, for some reason, then and there, I said, I'm going to learn Greek. So I did. I enrolled in a Greek class, started taking Greek. And I was fascinated by it. And I was fascinated by the ability to think um, the thoughts of some great writers, philosophers, thinkers uh, in their own tongue. Hmm. Um, also, I was starting to become serious about my own Christian faith, and I knew that the New Testament was written in Greek, and I wanted to be able to access the New Testament in, the, in its sure. original. So I started to study, uh, took, took Greek in college, and that led me to Latin, because I realized the two were kind of sister languages, mm -hmm. both really important. So it was kind of a historical interest, in, and, and with Greeks, a spiritual interest that got mm -hmm. me interested in those two languages um, at the beginning, and then I just kept with them. I wouldn't say that I've become, you know, Latin scholar or Greek scholar. I've met the people who are scholars who do this, you know, all the time professionally. But those languages have become, you know, kind of a part of my DNA, something that I I turn to almost on a daily basis. So mm -hmm. I find them a part of my thinking and, and living. So it's been a great blessing. And then from Latin and Greek, you know, as you can imagine, those led to other places. It certainly led to the great Greek and Roman writers, but they also led to other interests, like language, other linguistic interests. Um, I learned really quickly that Spanish was a Romance language, and that some 90% of the vocabulary from Spanish came from, from Latin. And I realized, boy, I could, I could learn Spanish better if I, I'm learning another language at the same time. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm kind of doing, right. I'm studying right. more Absolutely. than one language. And that, that was a, a lovely discovery. And, it's kept me motivated. Yes, that's very helpful, that kind of efficiency in learning languages. Yeah. Once you learn the, the root language of a particular uh, you know, genre, then you can learn others. I've, I've had much to be true myself. Mm -hmm. um, I want to go back to something that you said, that you have enjoyed learning to think the thoughts mm -hmm. of the thinkers you've been reading in their own language. Mm -hmm. Can you talk to me about how you think that is a... Uh, a part of classical education that mm -hmm. parents should be striving for? Or do you think that's a goal mm -hmm. that classical educators should have to, tr to enable their children to do that? And what are, what are the advantages to doing that? Yeah, I think it is a worthy goal, but it's like um, on, on, a way, on your way to Rome, there's some really great towns you're going to visit and see. Mm -hmm. So even if you don't get to um, a place of, say, Latin conversancy and fluency, along the way, there are wonderful benefits. Mm -hmm. So I think it is good to set that as a goal, but it can be a provisional one. Okay. In other words, if, you, if, you're, if a student ends up stopping a study of Latin before she's been able to, say, read 
Cicero. Um, that's that's okay. Yeah. Um, and there's just as you know, there's degrees of learning a language. Right. Language is acquired slowly, mm -hmm. like mathematics. Right. It's better to do a little bit regularly, and not think that you're going to kind of master language in a, in a year or two. Um, so I think sometimes we get so utilitarian, we get, we want to check that box off, mm -hmm. no Latin. Right. But really, as you're studying Latin, so many wonderful things are happening. You can rejoice and delight in it along the way, regardless of how far you go. And there's a way of, say, accessing Cicero, um, even before you're fluent. You know, you might be using a dictionary, you might be reading more slowly, you might be bringing in some friends, but you're still accessing Cicero, mm -hmm. uh, even if you're not reading it like your daily newspaper. Mm -hmm. um, that's how I would read Cicero, slowly, uh, okay. you know, with helps. Yes. Um, now I can read other simple Latin without much help, like the Latin Vulgate and so on. But that's okay. So mm -hmm. I, I'm not, I'm not upset with myself that I that I can't just pick up and read uh, Cicero straight through, or Virgil. Um, so I think we just have to be somewhat balanced about it, somewhat um, um, realize that it's there's multiple things happening at once that are very good when we study Latin. Absolutely, and I'm going to totally put you on the spot with mm -hmm. this question, but I've been wanting to mm -hmm. pick your brain on this because it's I I have been thinking about it myself and I haven't come up with a completely coherent answer, but mm. I know that you, you think a lot about the role of virtue in classical education. Mm. I was wondering if you think that, you know, as you give this wonderful analogy of kind of visiting different spots mm. in Rome on mm. the way to, mm. to learning Latin, what is the role of language learning in cultivating virtue in children? Oh, it's a great question. There's so many things that happen when you're studying a language like Latin or other, la other languages mm -hmm. too, but it teaches you to attend. You have to slow down to study mm. Latin. So those of you who have gifted kids, 100% <laughs> of you, right? Uh, you know, those gifted kids who are quick studies, who learn things fast, Latin will slow them all down. Mm, uh, I like that. Can, I like that. <laughs> Latin, you can always give them a level of Latin that will humble them yes. and help them to realize that they have much to learn. Um, it also is, is um, te it teaches you to attend and that it teaches you to to do the slow study that's necessary for important academic and just life and professional work. Mm. Um, you know, to to study Latin and any other languages, to do a lot of whole part analysis and synthesis and back and mm -hmm. forth. And that's what generals do. You know, yeah. That's what uh, entrepreneurs do. So there's a, there's a kind of analogy of learning there that's, that's present. Um, but in terms of virtue, patience, attention, um, um, the ability to kind of meditate on something, the uh, ability to appreciate fine craftsmanship, um, then, then you can go from there to, say, diligence. Um, language learning requires um, kind of a long obedience in the same direction. Yes, like absolutely. Peterson. And, and then and when you begin to see the fruit of that over time, that's instructive to what learning is, mm -hmm. all learning. If uh, you wanted to start a software company, say, there's going to be a process of what you would have to go mm -hmm. through. And you would have to learn a number of things about the business world, about software development, about the integration of tools, and so on. Um, if you had studied language and gone far and say your study of Latin, you would find that that would serve you very well starting a company. Um, you would learn what mastery is. I, I'll, I'll quote C.S. Lewis on this. He, he in his autobiogra autobiography, Surprised by Joy, he says that we should teach uh, far fewer subjects and teach them far better. Mm -hmm. And he's talking, uh, he's reflecting on his own study uh, from age about 14 to 17, where he studied with the great Knopf before mm -hmm. he went off to Oxford. And he was required to read in Latin and Greek every day translate passages, and then argue about these passages with his teacher, his tutor. Um, and he says what he learned is what mastery involves. How, what does it mean to master something? Um, we, he thinks, deprive students of mastering anything. We stop, uh, we stop too soon. But if you learn how to master language, even to become conversant in it, that, he says, gives us a taste for what it is. And once we have a taste for what it is, we can apply that to the next thing. Mm. So that's another 
something else that perhaps could be discussed in another context. Do we ever finish anything? Mm. Or do we ever teach kids to master something or are we, are we constantly you know, uh, you know, kind of quitting too soon? Mm. I, uh, I completely agree. That's actually been one of the interesting things for me having just finished a PhD mm. in a language is that my doctoral education made me so very aware of all that I don't know. Mm -hmm. And so that is actually very liberating because mm -hmm. it gives me a great dose of humility, but at the same time gives me a zeal. I mean, I feel like life's too short. There's still so many things I want to learn in theory. You know, I've, I've spent, mm -hmm. I just spent seven years becoming an expert, quote, quote, in <laughs> right. Spanish literature, and mm -hmm. yet there is so much more I want to know and so much mm -hmm. more I want to explore. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that, that that, for me, was a great blessing of, mm -hmm. of my education, and I want my children to see that as well mm -hmm. in, in everything that they study, that that we can learn, there are there's so much that we can learn, and through mm -hmm. diligent study, so mm -hmm. much knowledge can be attained, and yet the world is wide and broad, and um, and we it's a lifelong process, and mm -hmm. we'll never arrive. I, yes. I I don't think we'll ever arrive. No, but. we won't. So that the hum so humility would be another virtue that is that comes from language study. Yes. Um, there's an entire corpus of literature in Latin and Spanish, mm -hmm. you know, and we would be unaware of much of it when we die. Yes. So um, we, we have to make peace with it. There that. we go. <laughs> yeah, we, we believe in an eternal life, so there'll, yes. be, there'll be opportunities for ongoing study in another, another place in time. So humility, diligence, attending, um, the ability to analyze and synthesize, the, to get a taste for what mastery requires. Those are all great, I think, virtue benefits for the study of language. I think so, and I think also that we often attribute those benefits mostly to our children as they're learning, but I mm. have in my community a lot of moms who are learning Latin alongside their children, yeah. and I, so I would say to those moms, just as an encouragement, that mm. these are things that language learning can help you cultivate as well, mm. um, and mm. I have found that to be true in my own experience, learning languages alongside my ch children, mm. and um, in addition, I think for mothers who are studying languages with their kids, there's also a sense of, of great empathy for them because mm -hmm. language learning forces you to almost return to that grammar stage where you are doing the foundational building blocks of learning. Mm -hmm. And your child's experiencing that in every discipline that he or she is exploring. And so mm -hmm. learning a language in that sense, something that is completely new, the subject's completely new, mm -hmm. can really give you a feel for the mm -hmm the experience of your child as he or she is moving through the different mm -hmm. stages of development, I think. Um, I don't know if you have any no, thoughts no, on that no, or anything right. to add. No, I would just add that uh, there's a kind of, therefore, uh, a, a modeling power that comes from you learning a language alongside your children, learning with them. Um, there's this, a kind of community that is developed when we, when we are studying with our children. Um, we were just talking about this before we were on camera, that... Um, Children need to see their parent slash educators um, learning along with them and even ahead of them um, so that uh, it's just kind of um, absorbed in their hearts and souls and minds that learning is something that continues to go, go on no matter what your age is. Uh, and the delight of discovering and engaging something true, good, and beautiful um, never stops. Um, so, yeah, yeah, we both have finished PhDs and realized that they were they were just introductions. Yes. Right? So definitely. Uh, don't be intimidated by those of us who have no. PhDs. We were just introduced to something and we had to do a focus study in a couple of areas. But we're all human beings who want to know the true, the good and the beautiful. And that modeling of it is very, very powerful. So I think it's a tremendous thing to learn a language. Uh, to be learning a language at all times. You know, for example I'm doing some Italian because uh, our company leads a program out to Italy every summer, and that's just another benefit. Uh, having studied Latin, I realized that Italian is um, Latinate. <laughs> <laughs> yes. you know, someone has said that Spanish is just bad, la bad Latin spoken very fast, right? You right, right. Well, the same thing is true of Italian, except it's even faster. Uh, so, you know, you can. Um, for for me, I, I enjoy studying Italian. It's just it's, it's a delight. It's not a fast process right now, but. Um, my ear in particular is very slow in picking up Italian in conversation, but it's still a delight. 
Yes. And, and that's what I mean. Uh, studying a language um, is going to continue to give you lifelong pleasure. Yes. Right? Lewis men mentions this in his book, too. He says the students studying his Greek declensions um, can't quite yet imagine the pleasure it's going to be when he's able to read some lines of, say, Homer in the original. That pleasure is coming. So um, there are other pleasures, though. There's pleasures, lots of pleasures that come before you can read Homer in the original. Yes. But that is a great pleasure. It's yeah. coming. And when you, when your children see you experiencing these pleasures, these benefits, these delights, it's going to show up on your face, in your conversation, and that's going to inspire them, and it's going to educate them. Absolutely. I completely agree. Mm -hmm. Well, on that note, just uh, to wrap up with the pleasure of language learning, I hope that you are experiencing that with your children. And um, I would like to thank Dr. Perrin for his time mm -hmm. and his encouragement. So uh, thank you so much. And muchas gracias, Tibiago, <laughs> as we say in Latin. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> As we say in Spanish. Okay. Adios. Adios.